Hey ladies, it's good to be with you again talking about the power of a praying wife. And before we get started, I wanted to mention two things. First of all, we are going to take next week off, but we'll resume on Saturday, January 2nd, 2016. If you can even believe that we're almost there, because I can't. And the second thing is, we're going to go back to discussing a couple of chapters per lesson. So go ahead and read chapters 13 and 14. So for this week, though, we are talking about chapter 12, which is his protection. And I believe I've mentioned to you before that my husband travels for work. So he's on a plane pretty much every week or every other week. Um, in addition to that, I believe I mentioned to you that he loves cars. And he doesn't just love to look at them. He likes to drive them kind of fast around a truck. In addition to that, because I needed one more thing, he has a motorcycle. So, enough said, I needed this chapter. So I was thinking about the whole concept of protection, and I think it's one of those things that we kind of take for granted, sprinkled with moments of not taking it for granted. And what I mean by that is a lot of times we get into our cars or we get on a plane and we really just assume, and this is very normal, that we're gonna get where we're intending to go. But, and I know we're thankful when it happens. We always have this general sense of thankfulness. But when something, when we hear about something kind of deviating from that, when, when things go wrong, then we have this real just sense of thankfulness for God's protection. And it got me thinking about that old school Amy Grant song that says, God only knows the times my life was threatened just today. A reckless car ran out of gas before it ran my way. Near misses all around me, accidents unknown. Though I never see with human eyes the hands that lead me home. And Stormy reminds us in her book that accidents do happen even to godly people. That's why prayer for your husband's protection needs to be frequent and ongoing. You never know when it might be needed in the battlefield. And if something happens, you'll have the comfort of knowing you've invited God's presence and power into the midst of it. You know, on a kind of related note to this, if you guys are anything like, like my family, whenever we go on a road trip, we always make sure to say a prayer uh, before we get started, just asking God for his travel mercies. Um, and I know that's a good thing to do. But I've, in the past few years, I think I've been challenged to not let the conversation end there. So what we have really just tried to make it a point to do now is once we get to our destination, to just say a prayer just say thanks to God for, for keeping us safe during our trip. You know, and it's really good for me to do that because it helps prevent me from going back into that assumption mode like we were talking about earlier. And it really gives me and all of us a chance just to acknowledge God's protection on us. So we know that this chapter wasn't just referring to physical protection. In fact, we know what the Bible says that we don't just fight against flesh and blood, but there are these principalities and powers they're just strategizing against us. So Ephesians chapter 6 gives us something that we can pray over our husbands. And here's what we can say. Put on every piece of God's armor so he will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, he will still be standing firm. And I really love the honesty of this verse because it's not saying that we're going to always be able to prevent or avoid the battle. But what's going to happen is even after we've gone through the battle, we're still going to be standing firm. And I was wondering, do you guys have a story kind of like what Stormy shared where you just really saw God's hand of protection in a situation? I would love to hear about it or just hear anything else that you learned when you read this chapter. So that's it for now. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Enjoy your time with friends and family just celebrating the birth of our Savior. And we will catch up in a couple of weeks. God bless you.